I, I read the gospel. You say you were convinced that you were what? An atheist. Oh, okay. My, my mother, my, my mother okay. drank, and she said to me one time, well, she was an atheist, and she told me that she didn't believe in God, and, and then I, you know, I lived with him for a couple of years. He told me he didn't want me. He told me I looked too much like my mother for him to ever love me. And so when I was 15, um, I left, and I tried to get in touch with him, and I, he has never been in touch with me since. And so we're just trying to get prepared and get ready for what's coming. But what is coming? Casey, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Hi, Jesse Lee. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Thanks for calling. Yes. I called um, because you started talking about Bible thumpers, and I would have never called the show. But um, I started watching you about a month ago, and my husband and I, and we were watching, and I knew that you were right about about a lot of this stuff. And I had I had drank for about thirty years of my life, and I quit drinking about two years ago, not because of a revelation from God or anything like that. But I had I when I was drinking, I was um, convinced that I was an atheist, and and I you I, I read the gospel. You say you were convinced that you were what? An atheist. Oh, okay. My, my mother my my mother okay. drank, and she said to me one time, well, she was an atheist, and she told me that she didn't believe in God, and, and then I, you know, met a friend and in rehab of all places, and he said, you're not a Christian, you know, you don't believe in that, and he started giving me books uh, about, um, by Sam Harris and Christopher Hitchens, and and I read the Gospels, and I really hadn't read the Bible much. I, I tried to read it once, and I got about, I don't know how many chapters through Genesis, and then I thought, well, I'm going to read the shortest chapter, and I think it was... <laughs> I think it was Ruth, and I thought, well, this is kind of weird. And then there were a few times that I had I had read Revelations when I was high, and that was really bad. But um, so I read the Gospels, and I and I was one of those deniers, you know. And I I saw Jesus was angry, and I thought, well, this isn't what they you know sold Jesus as this peace loving you know whatever. And so I used that, and then so I've been watching you for about a month, and then I went to a church a couple weeks ago, and and I got a Bible because I had thrown my Bibles away. Uh, years ago, and um, I, uh, I yesterday, day before yesterday, I sat on my back porch and I said, God, and I, I was thinking about all these different religions and all these fights that are going on with Muslims and, and Jews, and, and I said, God, I, I, believe believe this or not, but um, I said, God, tell me, every every religion thinks they're right. Tell me, tell me if Christianity is right. And I opened the book, and I'm not sure if this is right because I'm not really good with the Bible, but I opened the book, and it was, I think it was Ezekiel um, 24, 15, I think. Okay. When I asked about the Muslims, and it said something about the Philistines. And I was like, okay, this is how you feel about that. And I said, well, what about the Jews? Close the Bible, open it back up, and this could be wrong too, but I think it was Jeremiah 15. And it talked about the Jews, and then I got real sad. But then I thought, this is right. This is right. Christianity is right. So I closed the Bible again, and I said, God, tell me where to open it up again. And I opened it up again, and I promise you, Jesse Lee, it was John okay, 5.25, I think. It talked about salvation. And I thought, okay, I'm on the right path. And I knew what you were talking about with, with race and stuff like that, because when I was drinking, I I had gotten all these TWIs, and I went to prison for a couple of years, and so I was with all kinds of races, and and I met people that were, all you know, they were either good or bad, and it didn't matter what race they were, and I talked to all kinds of people, and it didn't matter, and so I knew it wasn't you know it's not white supremacy, it's none of that, it's none yep, of that, it's just good, or, right. it's just good or bad, yep. it's just good or bad, absolutely, amazing. You don't sound like a prisoner. I don't look like one either. I'm about five foot one. <laughs> you I'm sound, tiny. You sound like a nice little sweet southern white woman. <laughs> I'm about twenty. I'm twenty percent Cherokee, but I look very, very white. <laughs> I can imagine walking down the road past your house and smell apple pie coming through the kitchen window. People would never. If you looked at me, you would never think that I ever went to prison. No one would ever believe it. <laughs> Amazing. And so, did you have a question for me? I just wanted to tell you I love you and thank you. Thank you. Have you forgiven your mother? I have. I have. Um, 
she had her own demons, you know. Yeah. And my dad left. My dad left when I was 15 months old. Wow. And she she ended up marrying some al- alcoholics, and they beat her. And we we had a real tough time growing up, and she had a tough time. And and I I know that she's in heaven now because when I went to prison. The first day I was there, something overtook me. I don't know what it was, and, and I was so angry about this later, and I'll, I'll tell you why. But um, I, for some reason, uh, I was going, they have this thing called diagnos- diagnostics, and they, you go see a doctor, and this doctor looked at me, and, and he, she said, you look like an angel. And I said, what a weird thing to say to me. And I was walking from that office to another thing, wherever they were taking me to, and about six different officers came to me and tackled me and gave me a shot, and I got put in... Uh, solitary, like a dungeon type thing, and it was freezing cold. Now, I know this sounds really weird, but this is, it's true. It's in the Texas prison system, and I was driven to this unit and put in this really cold cell for 10 days and drugged naked with a suicide blanket. I have no idea why. I still to this day don't know why. And about 10 days later, they, they stopped drugging me. They took me upstairs, gave me a blanket, and I was in there in this room by myself for 56 days. And, uh, I didn't have glasses, I didn't have contacts, and I'm blind. And um, through some sort of acrobatics during that time, somebody got me a book, but I couldn't read it. And I prayed, and I said, God, please be with me. And I was able to read about 25 pages of this book, and this uh, it was by, I've never heard of this man, Tony Hillerman. I think he's a Navajo. But anyway... Uh, he a Navajo? I, no, this this book, the, the, the author of the book was Navajo. I'm Cherokee, oh. but anyway... Uh, How do you know he wasn't a... Idaho. <laughs> it said, oh, it said no. on the book. But I could read it. The thing was, it was dark, and I could read it. Yeah. And yeah, I can't see. I can't see without glasses. Right. But I wasn't able to see for very long. It was just for like 20 pages, and then after that, I couldn't see anymore. But then I was like, but then I forgot all about that, or I just denied it for about 10 years, and, and then I remembered it again. And my husband, who he was, uh, he's been with me for 26 years, but we just got married a year ago. But Can he, he handle you? I, he, I put that man through hell. I was so wicked to him. He, he kicked me out. He, he, you know, said I couldn't drink around him. He was, he graduated from Catholic school. He's, he's a saint. He's a good, good man. And I, I aborted his baby when, when we were 25. I'm 51 now. We don't have kids. How many did you abort? Um, I, I don't even know. You aborted a lot but, of babies? Well, the first time I was 14, and my stepmom took me to get one. And then, um, yeah, and then when I was 25, I got pregnant, and I told him that I was going to have an abortion. And he said, you don't have to do this. And I remember I was offended. I thought, well, here I am, you know, making it, you know. And he was trying to tell me that, you know, you don't have to do this. Well, in my mind... I didn't think anybody would want to have a child with me. I didn't want to bring a child into the world and treat a child like that. I didn't want to do that to to anybody. I understand. I didn't want to put anybody through any kind of pain like what I had been through. I would have been a horrible mother. And somebody told me, oh, you don't know, that would have changed you. And I I said, would it? Because I met a lot of mothers in prison, you know, a lot. (laughs) 98% Are you 98% able to, of them are women. Casey, can you hold for me? I have a few questions yes, for sir. you. All right, hold on. Yes, Casey, how are you doing today? Um, I'm okay. Uh, I'm a little worried about what's going on in the world and, and with that bridge and how significant that is. And I, I want everyone to know how significant that is and that we're in a war, that we're in a war for our lives and for this country. And um, I think we should drop everything and get our, find our with God and, and why are you worried about the war, uh, the bridge and the war? Why are you worried about what good is it doing you? I'm worried about the, the children in this country that are innocent. And why? And the people. And, why? Well, I don't have kids, but I care about kids and I care about. Why are you worried about the kids and the war and the bridge and all that? Why? Because I want people to stand up and fight for what's right. And why? I think because this this country's lost God. No, God is still here. I know, but a lot of people have strayed, and like myself. And but, but what good is it doing you to worry about the children and the bridge and the war? What good is it doing? Is that changing the world at all for you to sit home and worry about it? 
Well, <laughs> I'm not just sitting home worried about no, it. I mean, I, I'm, I mean well, I'm, when I say sit home, go to work, whatever you do, what mm-hmm. good, good is it doing you or the world for you to worry about it? I don't know. None, I suppose. And so why do it? I, I feel like it's motivating me to do something. Like What's went out motivate- and got rice and beans and went out and, and uh, we're, we're just preparing. We're getting everything ready because we're, we're afraid that other people aren't going to be and they're going to be in need. And so we're just trying to get prepared and get ready for what's coming. But what is coming? I think, I think, this is it. I think we're, this is, this is it. This is, we're in a, in a fight for our souls. Um, where are this you is, getting those thoughts from? I just, I, I believe that God's telling me this. No, God's not telling you that. You think God no. wants you to worry? No, no. I think God wants me to prepare. Prepare for what? For what's coming. What's coming? I think we're we're going to. I think we're going to have some harsh times ahead. And where are you getting those thoughts from? Mm, just looking at what's going on. Um, Casey, I want to encourage you to work on yourself. Anyone that worries is evil. Oh, Satan is your God, and that's why you worry because you don't believe in God. You believe no, about it. Then why are you worried there? I I don't know. It's not like I don't trust this. I know I know what's going to happen. I know the outcome. Casey, Casey, but I feel like it's putting it's putting the fire under my feet to do something about it. You can't do anything about it. Ain't nothing you can do about the bridge falling. There's nothing. No, no, no. no. I mean, I mean, you know, we we got well. uh, That's as far as I'm going to go with that. Casey, let me ask. You think God wants you to worry about the bridge falling? No, no, do you I don't think, think God he wants you to worry about it. Do you think God wants you to worry? You think God wants you to worry about wars? No. Do you think God no. wants you to worry about the children? No. Then why are you worried then? You're right. No, that was a question. I. I I don't know. I know why you're worrying. Why? You're living in your imagination. You're getting the thrills, and it makes you feel like you're right. It makes you feel like you have love. It makes you feel like you care. And it makes you feel like you got to take some type of action, which is all evil. You're listening to the devil. Oh, I've just been crying and crying and crying for days. Because you love your misery. No, I don't. I want out of it. I've asked him to please, please help me to stop suffering. Do you want to stop suffering? Yes. Doubt every thought. You're unconscious. And in your unconscious state, you're living in the past or the future. And you're worshiping the devil and you're not with God. God is in the present. He's always right where Casey is. At all time, but your mind is with the past or future. God is not into that. At, he's not into time. You got to uh-huh. stay present. Have you forgiven your father for not protecting you from your mother? That's hard. Have you forgiven your father for not protecting you from your mother? No. Why not? I, I want to. He was just not a very nice person. He's actually pretty evil, I think. Are you a nice person? Most of the, I think, yeah, I think so. What's nice about you? Here you are worried and scared and feel, what's nice about that? <laughs> There's nothing nice about that. So why do you think you're a nice person? I don't know. I, I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. You're not a nice person. And what made you, what gives you the right not to forgive your father? What's so holy about you and righteous about you that God forgive your father? Why can't you forgive him? I just really just try not to think about him. I I just, I feel like he left me. He abandoned me, you know. Have you asked him about? I came along. 
Have no, you, he doesn't want to talk to me. Have you tried to talk to him? Uh huh. I've written him letters and tried to talk to him. He doesn't want to talk to me. I've tried to um, I tried to um, friend him on social media, and he ignored me. And um, he's did, eighty something. Did you treat it, treat him the way your mother was treating him? No. Uh, well, I don't. My, he left when I was fifteen months old. When I when I was born, I had pneumonia about five months later and then I had two sisters that were older and he said we were an anchor around his neck and he left and I didn't see him for 10 years and I guess the police had called him and told him that he needed to come pick up his daughters I lived with him for a couple of years he told me he didn't want me he told me I looked too much like my mother for him to ever love me and so when I was 15 um, I left and I tried to get in touch with him and I, he has never been in touch with me since so. forgive him he couldn't help himself. Forgive him. He didn't know how to deal with your mother. He didn't know how to deal with you. He didn't know how to deal with his mother. Forgive him so that you can be free. Okay. You you never, you can read the Bibles until the cows come home. You can uh, go over there and fish the bridge back. You can go over there and stop the war, but you will never have peace until you forgive your father. You will never know God until you forgive your earthly father. How can you enter into the kingdom of heaven within or above when you have hatred in your heart? Anyone that has anger is of their father, the devil, and you're not going to enter into the kingdom of heaven within or without. Your father could not help himself. Had he been able to do better, he would have. He has no love. He's just like you. Exactly what you're thinking and feeling and the hell that's driving you, it's the same spirit that's driving him. And the same spirit, if this report is true about this man that kills his family, did you hear the opening of the show What I was talking about Yes, that? I did. I, I listened to the whole thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's the same spirit in you and your father and everyone until they overcome it. It's no different. It's the same spirit as in Paul of the Bible when he said that I had to realize it's not me. It's something that has made a home in me. It made a home in your father and was passed out from his mother. And I want to promise you, there is never, ever, never, ever, ever, ever reason to be angry. No matter what happens, what situation come your way, there's never a reason to be angry. If you want to be free, Casey, you got to forgive. Okay. It ain't going to work no other way. Okay. You got to forgive your father. And when you forgive your earthly father, then through your earthly father, you will return to God. Right here on earth, and you will have perfect peace. Okay. I trust you. It's, and and uh, I want you to do my silent prayer. Have you given that a try? No. I, I don't know what that is. Go to rebuildingaman.com slash prayer. Rebuildingaman.com? Yeah, slash prayer. Mm -hmm. And I want you to do that every morning, every night. And f even though your father won't talk to you, according to you, you realize he can't help himself. If he if he didn't if he didn't was not living in the same hell you're in, it would have been different. And forgive your mother. Your mother was evil as well. She couldn't help herself. They did the best they could. They had no love. They have been traumatized by their parents. Okay. And do the silent prayer and watch those okay. thoughts. And I wanted to just in closing. I want you to know, in spite of all the hell you've been through, according to what you've told me, in spite of all the hell you've been through, the abortions and all that, you are not guilty of anything. You have never done anything wrong. <laughs> You're not guilty. Satan in influenced you to do those things, and then he caused you. To, he told you you were guilty. It's not true. You're not guilty. You, okay. you have never done anything wrong. 
It has always been the spirit, evil spirits that made a home in your imagination. And it brought on those feelings, and you thought that the thoughts and feelings were you, but you're not guilty of anything. God is not judging you because he knows it was never you. You never did anything wrong. All your sins are wiped away. You are free, but you have identified with evil and call it you. Okay. Thank you, Jesse Lee. Do the silent prayer and let me know how it goes. Okay. And don't let Satan convince you not to forgive your parents. You've got to forgive them so that God can forgive you and draw you into the kingdom and the rest is history. Okay. I believe that. Let me know how it goes. Okay, I will. Okay. Take care. Thank you so much. Anything I've said that you disagree with? Not a, not a thing. <laughs> Does it make sense? It does make sense. I, I I heard you talking about forgiving the father, and I mean, I just never thought it was even possible, but I do now. Right on. Well, then, work on that. I'm telling you, you're going to see that you don't have a past. There's no such thing as a past or future. All you really have is right now. Every day is a new day. It's being renewed every day. And you're being renewed every day. Okay. Let me know how it goes, all right? Okay, thank you, you. And apologize to your husband for giving him hell. Oh, boy. <laughs> I have. <laughs> I have. That's why he married me a year ago. When, after I was sober about a year, he, he, he saw. All right. I wish you well. Okay. Let me know how it goes. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. 888 773 